Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're here at Fredonia High School for our first broadcast of the season of this 2024 Western New York basketball season. The Fredonia Hillbillies take on their rivals, the Dunkirk Marauders. I'm Shannon Davis, and along my side for the first time ever, we have Mr. Cody Decker. Welcome, Cody. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for filling in. Uh, tonight's two teams, this is the second league match. Both teams are coming off huge league, league victories for them, starting with Fredonia, who defeated Allegheny Limestone, which is always a tough, tough battle in, on the fourth, 73 to 68. And that was in Allegheny Limestone. So it's a never an easy trip to go down there and play any sport, more or less basketball in a hostile environment. So good league start for uh, Fredonia, but the Dunkirk Marauders are 1-0 in the league as well, defeating the Southwest Trojans. And it's always good when the Trojans lose. But that's a huge win for this uh, Dunkirk Marauder basketball program. I couldn't give you the exact date, but it's been a long time since Dunkirk has beat Southwestern in a basketball game. Um, so that's a real great start for them. Dunkirk is 2-3 and three overall, 1-0 and in the league. But don't let that record fool you. They played some real tough teams. They defeated Silver Creek to start the year off, but then they lost to Bogard, Jamestown, and uh, uh, Franklin, who was out of Rochester. So they really stacked their non-league games with some really good competition and getting them ready for this league schedule. So that's a wise move by the coach. On the other side, the Fredonia Hillbillies are six and three, uh, beating West Seneca West, losing to Lackawanna. They beat Kennedy lost in overtime to Harbor Creek um, at SUNY Fredonia well, right before Christmas holidays. They beat Lakeshore, beat Buffalo Academy, and Western New York Maritime Charter in a tournament over break, and they lost to Clarence in that same tournament. No shame there at A school. And like we said, they beat Allegheny Limestone on the fourth. So this is both teams' second league game, um, and we're going to have pause here, Cody, and they're going to be doing... Uh, the starters for both teams, and we haven't seen either team play so far this year, so we don't know a lot of info, and I don't have any stats for Fredonia, but um, senior Mike Hahn is leading for Fredonia with 17 points a game, and right there with him, Davion White, another senior at 16.3, and Ashton Putney is averaging 10 points himself. Pause here for the national anthem.
Okay, so there are your starting lineups for this two, the two teams we're facing tonight. And this gym is packed. There's not a seat open in either bleacher. So it's gonna be loud and energetic here early on, no doubt about that. And the key for Dunkirk Cody, uh, especially with recent history and, and the records, they really got to get off to a, a a good start. You know, get some confidence, stay in this early. They don't want this gym rocking any more they have to, being on the road, because this Fredonia crowd will go crazy early on here at any point that Fredonia gets any momentum. So Dunkirk needs to get a good start and uh, gain some confidence too. There's been some pretty lopsided battles in recent history. Davi White taking opening tip off along with number 12, Sincere Sellers. And here we go. And Luca Gullo is able to tip it to White. And Fredonia has the first possession here tonight. Gullo passes it over to Putney, back to White in the corner, guarded by Zentz. Little clear out action. Davi White driving really good defense by Zach Zentz. Forcing an errant shot by White, and here comes the Marauder. You got number 11, McCall, over to Tell, number one on the Orcutt at 21. Orcutt takes a three off the dribble and hits it with Guy in his face. Big shot for Orcutt early on here. Gull will bring it up, kick it out to White. Can he answer? And he does. It's going to be one of those nights. Tell bringing it up for the Marauders. White on him, over to Zentz. Sellers wanted the ball, and Zentz might have had him. He chose not to force it. Sellers has got a little mismatch. Good drive by Orcutt, and he finishes for two. Five points total here for Orcutt early on. Gullo driving here, takes a shot, but is blocked by McCall, and here come the Marauders. Tell pushing it forward. Pulls out, can't get the shot off. Koopman almost comes up with a steal, but Tell gets it back. Tell gets it back once again. Still going to the basket. And that's gonna be offensive goaltending by Sellers, yep. Ball was still sitting on his rim, but that just tells you what kind of ups Sellers has, Cody. Yeah, right now it's been loud and proud for both teams, so. Yeah, fun start so far. Gullo has it up to Koopman, the sophomore. Over to Putney. There's Mike Kahn, the leading scorer. Fredonia fakes the three, drives, kicks it out to Gullo, and he gets his pocket picked. Ooh, I thought that might have went off Gullo's leg, but the official saw it differently. Fredonia retains possession. White takes it out, Zen's on him. And Gullo playing point. Gets it over to Koopman. Putney streaking, got to him a little late, down low, pump fake. Can't get it to fall. Big White initially had it, but Zen stripped him, and Orcutt comes up with it and brings the ball up and settles down, gets it to his point guard, Tell. Luca Gullo picks Tell's pocket here. Three on two, gets it to White, and he's going to pick up the foul, first foul of the game, and that's Sellers. Real long arms of that young man. Just reached down a little bit. Too much swatting action instead of staying up high on that. And White will go to the line for two. First shot is in for White. Two players scoring all the points so far. And White hits the second one, five to five. 
or cut versus White, AKA Fredonia versus Dunker. Tell bring it up, little trap at half court here. And Gullo, great hands there. Gets it from Orcutt, draws the foul, and it's going to go the line, 4-2. Great defense by Luca Gullo. And you're going to see a lot of that tonight, the young man. A lot of energy, real intense defensively um, for Gullo. His first year up on varsity. Two players out here, Koopman and Gullo, both played JV last year. Gullo hits his first. Fredoni takes the lead for the first time this game. And Sellers makes or gets the rebound on the second shot mid. Again, double trap there. Zenz comes up with it, kicks it out to Orkut. Pull up jumper there. Little short. Zellers and White battling for it. It's going to be off White. And Dunkirk will maintain possession. Zenz is going to take it out for the Marauders. Gets it to Orkut, right back to Zenz. Zenz with a turnaround jumper, and he hits for two. Marauders back on top. Putney has the ball here, gets it to White flashing, good cut, good pass, and White finishes it. Tying the game up, again trapping, and Gullo tips it away, can he get it? No, what a hustle there by Luca Gullo, Cody. Diving, trying to keep that in bounds. That's what you want to see from your effort from you guys. Yeah, absolutely. No coach is going to complain about that effort. And let's see if the Marauders can uh, come up with a little bit of the answer for this trap on Tell right at half court. Koopman and Gullo gets it over there. A little out of control. White knocks it out of bounds. That was McCall. And I think that's what Ferroni's hope. They don't get the steal right at half court. They're hoping to put that little extra pressure on the Marauders and create some chaos. Inbound pass is stolen by Hahn. And here come the Hillbillies back the other way. Hahn gets it up to Putney. Putney is blocked, gets his own shot back, misses the layup, and Sellers does a nice job getting the rebound. A one-handed bounce pass to Orcutt, 4-2 on the break. Great job there by Sellers. And Fredoni comes right back. White to Putney for three. And that's short. Zentz gets the long rebound. Action packed so far. Tell has it now. Koopman on him. Tells driving up the middle. A little out of control there again, and Han gets the rebound. Han's out of control. No foul called. Han gets the rebound, and he finishes it. So the energy level is getting, I think, to all these players a little bit, playing a little too wild. Ball's not past half court yet here. This press is working. And Putney tips that away, and it'll be Dunkirk's ball. First rounds of substitutes here. We have number five, Jamison Quinn, back on the basketball team. He took last year off. And number 35, that is Colin Luce, a sophomore who played JV last year. Orcutt has it, calling out the offense here. 12 on the shot clock. Tell gets it. Loose on him. Five left on the shot clock. Orcutt's going to have to force one up here. He does. He gets rim, but it's going to be a long rebound. It goes out of bounds. Good defense there by the Hillbillies. Yeah, they forced the shot clock, almost shot clock violation, so... Yeah, a long NBA style desperate three to avoid that shot clock that's um, foul. And Luce was looking for Quinn who was cutting and he, he would have been open but his leg got tangled up there, lost his balance. So Luce's pass goes out of bounds, turned over by the Hillbillies. And here come the Marauders down by one here in the first quarter. A little pick and roll action. And Dunker, Fredonia causes another turnover by Dunker. And Han says, I'll, I'll bring it up this time. And Luce out getting a break. Or excuse me, Gullo out getting a break. Koopman now has it. Han has it in the corner. Doesn't take the three with the long sellers on him. And they're going to have a foul away from the ball on the floor. I believe that's going to be on Dunkirk, and it is. Let's see if we get a numbers. 
44 of the um, Marauders. That's Zach Zentz with his first foul. Third team. Putney in Gullo. Back in the game here. Giving Han and Koopman a break. Quinn gets it top of the key. Drives in, can't get the shot off. Kicks it out to White. And he doesn't get any rim and Sellers comes up with the rebound there. A little long, that's not what you really want at this point of the game. Yeah, no chance for a rebound at all. Tell has it. Gets it to Zenz, little give and go, pull up jumper for Tell, and that doesn't go. And Gullo with the rebound, push it up to Putney. Over to Quinn, over to Luce. Luce drives in, good take by the sophomore, just can't finish, and Zenz comes up with the rebound. Tell has it once again, Gullo on him, over to Orcutt. Runner on the drive, and he gets the roll. Orcutt's feeling it tonight so far. Timeout, 30-second timeout here by Dunkirk. Dunkirk takes the 30-second lead with 155 here in the first quarter, and Dunkirk takes the lead on that Orcutt runner. Cody, pretty fun game so far. Yeah, loud and fun being down here for once. <laughs> yeah. You don't it's typically see it down this point of view, and it's definitely interesting, with, especially with Well, you're PCs. usually looking at the game through a camera, too, and so on. So it definitely looks a little different. I never enjoyed watching the game through a camera um, ever. It's hard for me to follow that way. But, uh, yeah, just hang in there. Just keep filling in, flying out what you got, and uh, we'll have some fun. Yeah, we got Jackson Hickey back in uh, the studio, as always. We got Dylan here. Who else is working tonight, Cody? Uh, Cooper's up on the camera for tonight, and then Chip's running a special meeting at the station, too. All so oh, right, because there's a board meeting tonight as well. Okay, back action here. Gullo driving. He's got a lane, and he finishes. Good take by the junior, Luca Gullo, for two, and giving Fredonia the lead back. Tell bringing the ball up. Going back to the half-court press. Two for Dunkirk, uh, that is Jerez Gaines has checked into the game. Orca has it, thinks about taking a long three, instead a pull up jumper, and he hits again. He, he scored a majority of those points for uh, Dunkirk here. Absolutely, and they've most of them been contested too. He looks smooth. Gullo almost turns it over there, gets it back to loose, over to Quinn in the corner. Quinn almost turns it over, and it's going to stay with Fredonia with 18 seconds left on the shot clock. And Han and Koopman coming back in for Luce and Quinn. That was definitely a close call. I'm so, uh, out, out of bounds here, so. Yeah, some of these calls, I'm glad I don't have to make them because that one was close. You're absolutely right. Gullo takes it back. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Tell on him he's going to draw the foul on the reach in midcourt. Fourth foul now on Dunkirk. So it's going to come into play with players and um, the one-on-one -on -one in bonus territory and free throws here in the second quarter. First on tell, though. Koopman has it, gives it to Luce. White screens for Gullo, and he gets the layup there. Good pick by White, good finish by Gullo. Back-to-back -back layups for Gullo now. Over to McCall. McCall gets it back to... Tell and he tries to find uh, Goot Gaines underneath, but that's intercepted by Hahn and Dunkirk and Sellers. Sellers intercepts it right back, but he throws away, but Orcutt comes up with it. Oh, that would have been impressive to finish that one, but it looks like, yeah, rebound and back up to Orcutt for three. That's in and out. Loose ball and Koopman comes up with it, and here comes White the other way. Good offensive rebound there by Therese Gaines. Foul here. I believe it's going to be on Sellers. Cody, I was looking at a number of gains there. And White's going to go the line for two. And let's see who got that foul looking up at the board here. It's on McCall, his first team fifth. And White misses his first. And the 
fans are going crazy here. Dunkirk shaking the camera as White hits the second one. Now a full court press here. Trying to take that time off the clock before they have to rush that shot. Good offense. Absolutely, Cody, that's a great point. Um, not even look at the seconds in the first quarter, trying not to let Dunkirk get off a good shot, and Dunkirk did not. So that brings us to the end of the first quarter. Fredonia 15, Dunkirk 13. A lot of energy, a lot of noise, a lot of excitement um, so far here in tonight's contest. Kind of exactly what you expected. There's a lot of very athletic players on both teams. Both teams always want to win this rivalry game, and I think early on you saw some of the excitement and the emotions getting to some of the players, Cody. Yeah, with the emotions and all that, you start to rush shots, you start to be a little uh, frantic, you start to force things that you shouldn't force. I'm sure for Coach Bertrand will tell them you gotta settle down, get in your rhythm, and take your time getting across half court as long as... Yeah, and, and I, I think is gonna continue that pressure. Um, it, Dunker got away with a little bit of sloppiness at times, but I think they're only going to force more turnovers as that intensity and frantic, um, like you're talking about the emotions, continue. Um, so I'd continue with the press while they're switching off half court, full court. Um, what I've seen from Fredonia, they like to run too. So with playing full court press, any of that, they'll and, try to run. And they're switching the zone here, a little 3 2. So different looks here. Crandall likes to do that. Or come with a long three, a little bit long. Didn't foul his shot. He could have had his own rebound, but Koopman comes up with it. Um, but yeah, change it up there too. It's a nice move by Coach Bertrando, keeping the Marauders thinking and not letting them get comfortable offensively. Han has it, Gullo bails him out after he picked up his dribble. Little weave here, White to Koopman. Koopman kicks it out to Gullo. Gullo back to White for three, long. Gullo tips it to Koopman for two. Nice heads up play there by Gullo, tipping the ball right to his teammate. Back to the half court press. Ooh, that was a travel there. He got away with that with Gaines. Telv has it. Sellers in the corner with Gullo on him, and he's going to draw the blocking foul. And that was a mismatch. You know, when Marauders got to notice that and get the ball to Sellers down low. Gullo's on him off the switch like that. Yeah, that. You always want that guy down low to generate pressure down low and have that, bring that extra guy over. And Gullo is still on Sellers, so this Fredoni team is a little shorter, smaller um, than in the past, and Marauders got to take advantage of it. That ball is deflected out of bounds by Putney. Still Marauders ball. That was the first team foul um, for Fredoni and Gullo's first also. Long three by Tell, white skies for the rebound. No Marauders anywhere in the paint. Giving no chance for offensive rebound. Ball's tipped out of bounds by Gaines. Fredonia maintains it. Inbound play in the corner is a tough spot to inbound the ball. Putney takes it up, finds White underneath. And Sellers had to take the foul here. He didn't like the call. in this case, but you're never going to win, young man. And that's his second, so you got to keep an eye on that. He'll have to come out if he picks up another one here in the second quarter. And You know, you might even want to take him out and give him a break here. White misses the first, and that's exactly what Dunker Coach is going to do. I think that's a smart move. Let him cool down a little bit, think about it, talk about You do not want him picking up his third foul here early in the second quarter. Zachary Zen came in for uh, Dunker for him. So. Yeah. White hits the second five point lead, biggest lead up tonight for the Hillbillies. Tell dangerous pass to Gaines, gets away with it, but Gaines is going to, oh, he dribbles it off of White's foot, so Marauder still has the ball.
Orca drives, gets help from Putney, kicks it out to McCall, and White comes up with the rebound and pushes it forward. Sends on him, White kicks it out to Koopman in corner three, and he hits. And the Marauders are gonna take a timeout, find themselves down by eight, 6.06 remaining in the first half. Yeah, it's been interesting. Um, Bolt still has the jitters to me, and especially with Fredonia playing that trap, they seems like they have no um, questions solved or anything for them yet. No, the Marauders offense really, they haven't got off a good shot here in a number of minutes, and it shows on the scoreboard. Fredonia isn't looking like super clean and smooth, but that defense is causing Marauders so much trouble uh, that they're able to get an eight point lead here. Um, Again, I think that is a direct result of their defense and hustle. The players yeah. really have been flying around the court. That Fredonia's uh, on a 6-0 run in the last two minutes, so shows up in that pressure and taking smart shots that they need to be, be taken. Yeah, and when's the last time you saw Dunker get an easy look at a bucket? Not very easy. Yeah, not, and it's been, it's been a minute or two here with that. Almost in, halfway in the first quarter. going right back to this full court press. Gullo and Koopman up. Looking for that trap. McCall gets it over to Gaines. Ooh, nice crossover dribble. Gets it up to Zentz. A little slow and Fredonia causes another turnover. Quicker pass. Might have got a layup there for the Marauders. Gullo has it now. Gullo over to Putney. Putney out to Hahn, over to Koopman. Koopman doesn't take the shot. Putney thinks about it, he's driving. Spins, forces one there. Great defense by Gaines coming up with the block there. And a good stand by the Marauders. See if they can get some points off that defensive stand. Tell has it. Misses the layup and White comes up with another rebound. Gullo's gonna now bring it up court. Tell on him. Gullo gets it down to White, Zents all over him. Tell's gonna come in and gets the foul and White gets the bucket. And a chance like Pat Mahaney likes to say for an old fashioned three point play. Yeah, Davion right now has 10 points out of the 23 for Fredonia, so they've been sparking offense out of him. Yeah, absolutely. He came out with the three to start and hasn't slowed down. And he converts the three-point play, making the score 24-13. Fredonia 11 up now on the Marauders. Tell picks up his dribble. There's a trap over here to Mc on McCall, but he gets it to Gaines. Tell has it. Gaines has it in the corner. Koopman on him. Koopman gets the block, goes into Hans' hand. Gets it up to White. White fakes the three. Or cut in his face, and White shots way off this time. And Tell, a little bit of frustration there by White getting the foul at midcourt. He was trying and, to run in front of him. He just got called for it. Well, it's not uncommon. A little frustrating. He missed the shot and you're hustling downfield and that frustration results in a foul. You see it time and time again in high school basketball and White, it's only his first, team second. So no harm. Gaines has it, White on him. Gets it over to Tell. Tell tries, pull up jumper and he hits. Nice little jumper there by Tell and a much needed basket for the Marauders. Ending a scoring drought. Let's see if they can build off of that. Koopman. It's gonna be another foul away from the ball. It was called on number 12 for Dunker. 
And that's real big because that's 12's third foul, Sellers. And he is a difference maker for him. Very active, but he cannot pick up a fourth one here. They leave him in. He's got to be smart. But if you're Fredonia, you go right at him trying to draw that fourth foul. White kicks it over to Gullo. And Gullo is going to be called for the travel. So see if Marauders can come up with a big to come up with consecutive baskets here. Fredoni back to their half court press. Tell gets it over to Gaines. Back to Sellers in the corner, out to Orcutt. Nice to see him maybe set something up for Orcutt, their leading scorer. Tell gets it to Sellers. He had a jumper top of the key, didn't take it. Gets it to Orcutt, he drives in. He's going to get called on the offensive. And I didn't see who drew that. I, my vision was blocked there, but good job by the Fredonia defense. I think it was number 15. Number 15, Ashton that would be Putt. Ashton Putney. So Putney had some big minutes last year in the run that this Mara or Hillbilly team had, making it to the Far West Regional. Koopman brings it up, gets it to Gullo. Gullo drives, kick it out to Putney for three in the corner, and he hits. These Fredonia shooters are potent from the corners, whether it's Han, Putney, or White. All three are deadly shooters, and it showed there 27-15. Biggest lead of the night so far, up by 12 now. They've been putting pressure on them ever since that opening tip. After a short while in the first quarter, they went to a half court press and never looked back really since then. They've been generating a lot of turnovers. They've been forcing errors. Anything going wrong for Dunkirk is. Yeah, the, the pressure defense has worked. Although the last two possessions, they had some better looks. Uh, maybe they're figuring out a little bit. New substitute for the Marauders. That's Avery uh, Kristovinik coming in for Marauders. His first minutes of the game. Tell has it in the corner. That's a tough spot to be. Good job getting it back to McCall. Swin, Finn moving traffic. Gets it over Kristovinik. And White says, not in my house. A great save by Han keeping that in. Gullo gets it up to Putney. Oh, blocked by Tell from behind. Putney wide the call, but he didn't get it. Here comes Orkut right back the other way. Kicks it out to Tell. Long three. Way short. Good save there by Gaines. Getting it back to McCall. McCall gets it to Tell. Sovian drives and throws one up, and he gets the touch off the glass. So big basket for Amy Krasovic off the bench for the Marauders, bringing within 10. Gotta love the big fellow down low. You don't see that much with uh, future basketball players anymore. <laughs> Pass is deflected with Orcutt off of White. And a turnover here now. Substitution for Fredonia. Coach Petrano did not like that entry pass, and he is letting his players know it. Let's see. Uh, oh, you substitute Fredonia. That is Colin Luce in for the second time. Orcutt gets it back. White on him. Orcutt drives, and he's going to draw the foul this time. Going to line four, two. Say it's about to get loud soon. Orcutt makes his first. The old chance coming back tonight, Cody. And it did not work with Orcutt hitting both of them. Maybe they'll retire it. 
Yeah, Noah will bring it call. up. Yeah. Rodgers get within eight here. Hoopman with the drive and the finish. Off the bench for Fredonia, no, or Rodgers, excuse me, he's number three, Elise Gutierrez. Checked in for the first time tonight. Orca with the long pull up three, in and out, and White comes up with another rebound. With Sellers out, the Marauders are having a tough time on the board, and Koopman for a wide open three. Offensive rebound by Luce, but he has stepped out of bounds, and so Marauders will gain possession back, gain, down by 10. Trying to chip away at this lead, the deficit from the Marauders' point of view, um, before half, 106 remaining. 10 point gain, this will be a big possession for the Marauders, big bucket. Orcutt makes the pick, rolls, Tell drives in. Runner, no chance there, and Hahn comes up with a rebound. And here comes Davi Wright, right back. Kicks it out to Malachi, and his shot is off. That's number 20. Uh, Malachi Hall come, checked in for Fredonia and waits in no time getting the shot off. But his ball hit the top of the backboard, so Marauders gain possession. Still down by 10. You can tell, definitely tell in front of us that trap's working because Dunkirk's players are gasping for air. Yeah. Tell has it. Orcut on Han now. Or Han on Orca, excuse me. Orcut tough drive and draws another blocking foul. Go into the hole and go back to the line for two. This is Orcut's weakness as a junior, his third year on varsity. He played as a freshman, and that experience is showing tonight. Showing a lot of poise and skill out there. It makes his third free throw in a row. And Orchid hits a second. Once again, the lead down to eight. Shot clock is just on by like a tenth of a second. So Fredonia will hold the ball to this looking for the final shot of the half. Trying to get it back to at least a 10 point lead. White has it. Behind the back dribble, gets it out to Koopman. Kicks it back to White for three. And that is just short. Orkut with the rebound, can't get a shot off. And that'll bring us to the end of the first half. With the score, Fredonia Hillbillies 29, Dunkirk Marauders 21. And we will take a break here and come back and give you some Halftime statistics and a second half preview. Once again, I'm Shannon Davis. Along my side for the first time ever is Mr. Cody Decker.
Okay, we are back here at Fredonia High School. The Fredonia Hillbillies taking on the Dunkirk Marauders, up by eight at the half, and Hillbillies will start the second half with the ball. Um, we'll try to fill you in some stats. I know Urquhart and White are probably the leading scorers so far. Cody will fill in as we go. Han starts out with the ball. Fredonia like to get him going. Clear out, kicks it back out to Koopman. Koopman with the runner. Hahn to the rebound, but his shot was blocked by Tell. Gets it back to Koopman. And there's a long three by White, and Orca comes up with the rebound. See if they can continue chip away from this lead. It was 12 at one point, down to eight at the half. Tell with it, Koopman on him. Sellers back in the game with three fouls. That'll be a big key for the Marauders, is keeping him out of foul trouble. Orcutt forces one there, but they get a little bit of break. Ball goes off of Putney's hands, out of bounds. New shot clock. As of right now, Davion's leading Fredonia with 11 points. And Sellers on a real risky drive, draws the block foul against White. White wanted to charge. And Sellers gets the bucket and the chance for the old fashioned three. And that's uh, Davi on second personal foul, too. And White was looking for a little bit of uh, explanation. There's looking to clean up the floor here, looking for a little bit of sweat after the big collision. And that was a real close play. That easily could have been offensive. And if it was, it would have been Sellers' fourth. He's got to be careful here, Cody. The Marauders need him in this game if they're gonna have any chance, even just for defensively and rebounds alone. Like how you said, Sellers is playing with three fouls at this point in the game. And Seller misses the three, but Zen Skies for the board, gets it, and he puts it back. A four point possession by the Marauders, and now just a four point lead for the Hillbillies. And the Marauders go into a half court press and Sellers deflects it out of bounds and crashes hard into the chairs over there. It's good to see he's okay. And again, he's playing with such intensity. He's got to be careful. Koopman take it out, gets it to Han. McCoy all over, McCall all over him. And Tell tips it to McCall, another turnover by the Hillbillies. And here come the Marauders looking to get within two. The pick and roll back to Zentz at top of the key. He drives in. Pull up is short and it must have been off a tell. The official was right there, but I really thought that was off a hillbilly myself too. And I think the Dunkin' fans agree too. Yeah. Koopman loses the ball temporarily at least. Wild. Wow. Officials are letting everything go right now, Cody. There might have been a travel. There was a lot of contact. Bodies flying everywhere. Cody keeps possession. I do think they got the call right. right. It was on uh, Dunford's that guy hitting it off of his hand. Gullo so. with the drive. Gets Sellers up. Sellers gets the rebound. Gullo almost threw that fourth foul there. Good take, Tell drives in, Scoop just misses. And Han and Goopman almost let Tell get his own rebound. White drives in here and he's gonna get the foul and one. And McCall took a shot to the face there. He's holding his mouth a little bit. Fredoni is taking a 30 second timeout. Look at it. Calm it down here a little bit. And if I'm Coach Petrando, I'm going right at Sellers because the way he's playing, and I, and I love intensity, Cody, and I love the energy and the hustle, but he's going to get another foul here playing like that. Especially at that height, swinging your arms everywhere, you draw a lot of attention to yourself. He's trying to be everywhere, be for a teammate kind of guy. And Absolutely. With three fouls, it's kind of hard to play the style of game you always play. So they're trying to buy, Bertrando's probably going like, hey, we gotta go after him. He has three fouls. 
let's try and get a fourth and have him sit and then go down in the paint and keep scoring. I mean, like I said, credit to the energy level and in the in passion he's playing with, but sometimes you got to control that energy a little bit so you can stay in the game. White trying to finish off the three-point play, and he does. It looks like Fredoni is going to go back to this half-court 3-2 trap press. Gets it to McCall in the corner. White and Koopman on him, back to Tell. With the runner, no good. McCall battling for the rebound. Can't come up with it. Mahat. Han finally gets it to White up to Putney now, setting up the offense. A nice block there by McCall. Han just can't get it going tonight, averaging 17 on the season. Only a couple points tonight. Gullo with almost steal, but Sellers stepped out of bounds there, and they do end up forcing a turnover. Yeah, when he went to grab that rebound, his foot slipped a little too far. Gains on White, kicks it out to Han, his first three-point attempt, and that's long, and Orca comes up with it. And here come the Marauders back again, down by seven. Going to a little weave play offense here. Not as smooth as you would like it. The Sellers at the top of the key, and he gives the runner, can't get his own rebound. I would have liked him. He's gonna draw the foul. I would have liked him not to dribble there. He's much taller than the Luca Gullo, who is right underneath with him. Don't bring that down where Gullo might be able to get at it. And Sellers comes up limping, hitting the floor hard. But he's gonna go the line for two. Let's see, I don't think they put the, okay, number 11 they have on the scoreboard um, for the foul. And Fredoni doesn't have it. Okay, now it's double zero. Mike Hahn got his first. Sellers missed his first. And hits his second. Dunker still doing a little trap himself. Koopman gets it across half court. Over to Gullo. To Putney in the corner. And Putney hits the three. Big shot by Putney. And they cannot leave those shots open because Fredoni will take them and they make an awful lot of them. Sellers is trapped by Hahn and Koopman. Out of control, but he gets the roll. Can't believe he got that bucket to go, Cody. No, that's a tough bucket for him, so. Koopman has it now, guarded by Gaines. Han fakes the three. Oh, and Sellers, and Han's gonna finish there. And honestly, Sellers got away with a foul hitting Han in the head. A good finish by Han. Lead back up to eight. Or cut calling for the ball on a shorter Gullo. Spin move, a tough jumper there. Good no call by the officials in that time. A little bit of a flop by Gullo trying to draw the offensive foul. Putney has it, gains on him. Wide open underneath is Gullo. No shot, Gullo made it, but he does draw the foul. They're saying it's on the floor. We got a couple subs coming in here for Dunkirk. 32 coming back in the game. Amir Stolf Finick, or sorry, not sure how to pronounce it, and Juan Paz, 33, in for the first time for the Marauder, giving Sellers in <coughs> the call. Excuse me, a little bit of a break. Another foul underneath the basket here. I believe they called it on number two, Dunker. That was McCall's third previously, so he went out, and that's number one, Tell's second. Orca come up with the steal, and he's got lots of time and gets the layup. 
bring it to a four point lead. Timeout here. Oh, no, it was a foul. So tell us. See the scoreboard, yeah, the officials are signaling the calls real quick. And I think the there might have been a discrepancy in the score over there. They're comparing books. Yeah, I think that's what's going on. Um, there's a little disagreement of what the score is. Not going to be bonus. It's only the fourth foul, so that could have might they might have been counting fouls instead of points there. I knew that they were counting something, and that's what it was. So it's a fourth foul. I don't think they've updated the foul who it was on yet, but it looks like it was on Tell. It was either his second or third. Nonetheless, White has it now, top of the key. Koopman drives. And he's going to draw a foul on Juan Pez. The cold block. And Koop is going to go to the line and they're calling it a shooting foul, apparently. And I don't know if I agree with that. But that's. They are also at yeah. five fouls, too, so. Yeah, but six is the bonus, isn't it? And it wasn't one-on-one, -on -one because no one moved after the first shot. Uh, Koopman made the first, and makes the second. Couple big free throws for the sophomore there. He showed a lot of composure tonight as a first-year starter. Oh, you got Orcutt, give him the ball. A little late, should have done it sooner. In and out. Gullo had no help underneath. White's coming up, kicks it to Gullo. And White's, Gullo somehow gets that shot over Orcutt, gets it to fall. Good finish there by Luca Gullo, the junior. Tell with the pull up jumper, in and out. White with another rebound. He's got to be close to a double double now with his rebounds tonight. Not well on his way. Gullo has it slowing down here a little bit. Putney in the corner, down low to White. Or cut all over him, but the up and under by White in the bucket for two. Good finish for the senior, Davi White. Little hands foul there. Um, in the reach. Officials are starting to call a little bit more of that. They're letting a lot of that go earlier. That's Koopman's second foul, team third. Orcutt has it, calling for the screen. Doesn't use it though after he calls for it. Another runner off the boards for Kutovic and Hahn comes up with the rebound. Koopman finds a wide open Putney in the corner. A little short. And that is Gaines with the rebound. Tell with a big three. Gullo draws a foul, but he goes hard into the wall there. Caught Tell flat footed on that one, Cody. Nice drive, couldn't quite finish, but definitely draws the foul. I do believe it was called on number, yep, yeah, it was number tell. one. It was his third of the game, so. And Gullo misses the first, and they're gonna get Tell out. 
And number three is coming in, Elise Gutierrez. Gullo hits the second. Gaines bringing the ball up now with Tell getting a rest. Tell and Sellers, McCall all on the bench right now. There's gonna be a lot of scores gonna be left to Orcutt right now. Gaines with the pull up jumper, way off, real offensive rebound by Krasovic. His second bucket of the night. Nice touch off the glass, Cody, for a big fella. Yeah, that's always what you teach uh, them Dulles at a young age. tries and draws another foul on Gaines. Gullo will shoot two, and that's a lane violation. If he misses, he makes it anyway. Jamison Quinn checking in for the senior Mike Kahn for Fredonia, first time this half. And Gullo hits a second. Gullo really coming on some points here in the second half for Fredonia. Yeah, he's sitting at uh, 11 points right now, so we'll see. High off the glass, no good. White comes up with the rebound. to Gullo. Gullo's looking to drive. Orchid on him. Kicks it out to Putney in the corner. And that's just short. And rebound by Gutierrez. I almost thought he was going to shoot it there, but he didn't. So the end of the third quarter. Fredonia 46. Dunkirk 38. Making it an eight point lead. So after all that, and it, it kind of seemed like to me quick glance at Duncan might have got back in that game, but they actually lost two points in that quarter. Down, no, were they down by eight or six at the halftime? They're down by eight. Okay, so it was a push that quarter. Dunker got within four at one point, but couldn't hold it, and Fredoni was able to push it back out, double digits, and then down to eight at the end of the quarter. So the biggest issue for Dunker right now, they're sitting at 14 fouls versus Fredonia seven, so. Yeah. And they got big two, two time scorers with three fouls sitting on the bench at the end of the third quarter, so. Yeah, and, and it was key to the third quarter with Sellers, and once they took him out of the game, that's when Ferroni was able to gain the lead back uh, when Sellers went out. So he is key, Tell is key. Um, but what's, what's Dunker got to do, Cody, here in the fourth quarter to, to make a push and, and try to get back in this game and get the victory on the road? I see at the start of the half that they were doing trap and that was working out real well for them. Creating turnovers, getting easy looks, playing Fredonia's game, run, run, run. You just gotta force those turnovers as of right now because you're losing that turnover battle. Yeah, absolutely, and I agree. And that press did give uh, Fredonia some fits. There's a lot of length on that dunker court, but it also opens you up for Drawing fouls. Tell drives in and is going to draw a foul and go to the line for two. I believe that'll be on Jamison Quinn. And I think that should be his first, and it is. So Tell will take two. It's a good start, especially if he can convert on these free throws. And he hits the first. Going back to what you said, that's another thing. You gotta hit your free throws, you gotta take those easy looks. Yeah. Might not be the easiest thing, but. Yeah, you gotta... so, both teams have done a pretty good job from the line until hits the second tonight. The free throw shooting overall, it's been really good by both teams tonight, which is nice to see. Ferroni comes back after Tell puts two on the board. Han fakes the three, drive in with Sellers on him, and he's gonna get the roll. It's a good finish and a smart take by Han. He's trying to draw that fourth foul on Sellers we've been talking about all half. Oh, Tell just loses it. Ends up in Koopman's arm. He almost had over back. 
and then he loses it, and I think it's going to be, yeah, Dunkirk's ball. Putney tried to get it back, knocked the ball just on the line, so big turnover here by the Fredonias. Good job, Fredonia, good job by McCall forcing that. Yeah, so three players for Dunkirk have three fouls right now. It's good to see Zenz back in there. He's athletic and long, and he it's done a pretty nice job for, for Dunkirk tonight. I think he was a good sub for Sellers when he was in foul trouble well, early. Sellers forced that, and Zenz actually started the game, but he's been out quite a while here in the third quarter. Putney's three is off. White comes up with the rebound and gets the foul. And the bus basket is good. The foul is going to be on. I don't think it was on Sellers. No, but it's the fourth on Tell. And, and the Dunkirk players have to realize every time you swat down that, that chop, you're just begging for a call. Oh, sorry, it wasn't on Tell, it was on McCall. Okay, fourth on McCall, number 11. Either way, he has to come out of the game here. Gains in for him. And White looking to convert the three-point play, and he does. Increasing the lead to nine here. Tell brings it up, Koopman's on him. Gaines comes for the screen, nothing there. Gets it back out to Orcutt. Calling for an ISO here on Orcutt. Little pick and roll with Sellers. Gullo is on him down low. Pretty good defense by Gullo, considering how he was outmatched height-wise. But Sellers with a nice turnaround jumper there. You can't ask much more out of Gullo there. Gullo has it, setting up the hillbilly offense here. Han looking, hits the cutter. White, good pass, good finish. Good job creating points away from the ball by White. White with that basket has 18 points on the night. He's the leading scorer for Fredonia. Orcut drives, pull up, and that's just a two. Man, he's made some tough shots tonight. He'll take giving up that shot all day defensively. A long fadeaway two-pointer from the corner for Fredonia. Once again, same play, different players with the same result. This time it's Koopman to Han. Two easy layups. Marauders have given up on back-to-back -back possessions by the Hillbillies. Good job moving away from the ball. It's very key in basketball. You don't see enough of it in the NBA. That's why I can't stand watching. <laughs> well, of course we'll give a shout out to DFT. Thanks for your support, DFT, and donations over the years, supporting the Fredonia Access broadcast. It's a great place to get your local internet, sign up for fiber to the home. We got some great specials out there right now. You can reach out to me, you can call the office, um, support your local company here in Fredonia, who gives back so much to the community. Big thanks to DFT, and a big thanks to our crew tonight. We got the young man to my right stepping up big, helping out. We got a very strong camera and production crew as always. All right, after the timeout, 5.36 remaining. It's an 11 point game. Those are two nice offensive possessions by the Hillbillies. Quick whistle here. Not sure. The clock must not have started. Officials noticed it, stopped it, ran a couple seconds off, and here we go. Tell gets it to Orkut. Orkut with the long three off to the side. Long rebound. Gullo comes up with it. Pressure on, kicking over to White, trying to get it out to Han. Han gets it over to Koopman. Putney gives, takes, doesn't take the three. Nice pass down low. 
to White for another easy layup. Another whistle. I think you're gonna have a blocking foul on Koopman. His third for the night. And with all the contact we've seen tonight, that might have been a little ticky tack, but it's only the second foul. Tell doesn't get it. Hahn comes up with the rebound. Sellers helping Tell out. Only problem with that is they had a five on three. Hahn with a quick three from the corner. No good, Gaines comes up with it. Needs some help, Zenz helps him out and gets his dribble back. Marauders really need a basket here after the defensive stop. Zenz has it in the corner, kicks it to Orcutt. Orcutt for three, way long. And White comes up with the rebound. Oh, Ooh, that's a unintentional, bad yeah, unintentional. Zens didn't mean it. They, White took a step that Zens did not expect and accidentally ran into him from behind. And Zens is now going out with his third foul. Gullo has it, doesn't take the three. Reverses it back to Koopman, to Han, back to Gullo. Gullo drives in and takes it on Tell, and Fredoni is going to take a full timeout. And Gullo's been really effective on those penetration, either drawing the foul or converting on the layup this second half. Yeah, he's at least scoring eight points the second half. He was with five on the first half, so he's been rolling ever since that half. Probably had not talked to from Coach Petrando. Yeah, and if you look at Gullo on the season, he's only averaging 2.8 points a game. Um, so the junior's really having a career night tonight at the varsity level anyway. Davion White's at 20 points, and I don't believe, what is he averaging, 16, 16. points? Yeah. So he's above his average, gonna bump that average up a little bit. Right now, for Dunkirk, you only got five scorers. And mainly number 21 on Dunkirk's been shooting pretty good. Yeah, and he's forcing up some shots, and you can, he's tired, he's, but he hasn't come out, out of the game, I don't believe. If he has, it was a real quick stop, and he, you know, it's a tough defense on Fredoni is wearing him out. Long three by Tell, and that's short. And that's, you know, short shots are usually a sign of fatigue. Putney doesn't take the three, gets it back to Koopman, smart choice, set up the offense with the biggest lead of the night now at 15 for the Hillbillies. Run some time off that clock and get a good shot. Down low to White, turn around and he gets it off the glass. there by Koopman cutting off the drive. Orca takes it, gets the run. Wow, okay, and no basket. There, that's a tough call. Orca draws the foul, but he doesn't get the shot. And that was a break for Fredonia. And White's gonna come up with the steal. And Orca comes up with the block. Orca drives, doesn't take the shot, gets it over to Gaines. Tell now has it, three minutes left. Back to Orca, forces another three, but he hits this time. He's sitting at 27 points from the night, pretty much scoring all Dunkard's points at this rate. Koopman with the three attempt, and that's off. Rebound by Krasnovic. Tell pushing it. Oh, out of control shot there by Tell. 
That's the last thing the Marauders needed. Tells them she'll get off by that. Gaines on Gullo. Gullo drives in again. Can't get this from the fall. Gaines brings it back the other way. He takes the pull up three. And White is going to go out of bounds off of White. Stromick draws the foul, is gonna go to the line for two. And the big man's pretty agile. And he's getting scoring chances every time he gets the, his hands on the ball down low. That was a nice little move drawing the foul there. He's definitely stepping up for Sellers with three, four fouls as right now. And he makes the first. Get a little update on our national college championship. Michigan is up 17 to three. Koopman's gonna get a wide open layup. Not sure who they're gonna call it on. If it's McCall, that's his fifth. And the bucket counts. If it's Sellers, it's his fourth. Let's see. put it up on the board and the shot is good so I'm not sure who that foul is on but three point play was converted steal here by Han hard foul by I believe Gaines this time It was Sellers' fourth foul. Okay, it was on Sellers. <laughs> Koopman has it, top. Aaron pass and intercepted by Truman. Golo is gonna just didn't get set for the offensive foul. I was waiting for the big fella to pull move like a point guard. Yeah, that was a lot of contact there. I'm glad Gullo's okay. Chomik is going to go the line. The fans like what they saw. Yeah. Players are still going hard. Even 131 left, down by 14. A lot of pride out there right now. It's rivalry night. No one's giving up anytime soon. Sounds like a little mini earthquake in here. It's getting loud in here and he makes the second. White has it, gets out of the corner. And McCall's gonna foul and that'll be his fifth. Goes to the line for two. He hits the first. And he hits the second. Again, free throw shooting by both teams have been outstanding. Or cut and contested three. Saying it was deflected. Saying the shot was blocked partially there. So Dunkirk will keep it. Shot clock does not reset. Sellers thinks about the long three and he takes it. 
the big fella just scored. Hahn bringing it up against the pressure, gets it to White. Putney back to Koopman, over to Hahn in the corner, he fakes the three. And he's gonna draw the foul and one. Good body control there by the senior, Mike Hahn. Drawing that foul, staying under control and finishing. with the long three and he hits. White draws the foul, stop the clock with 15.9 seconds left. And it looks like we're gonna have a, a Fredonia mass substitution coming here. Okay, you got Ian Ferguson coming in, Tim Field, number 32, Brennan Lincoln, the sophomore. Um, who else? We also have, is that number two? It's Donovan Dowdy, the sophomore in. And White misses the second. Jamison Quinn's now gonna come in and that'll be the end of Davi White's night. And Orcutt's just gonna hold it here. do it here tonight at Rivalry Night. The Fredonia Hillbillies come up with their second league win of the year, their seventh overall, with this final score 68 to 54 over the Marauders. Next up for the Hillbillies will be, actually I don't have next up for the Hillbillies, but I do for the Marauders. They will be going playing Salamanca one of the top teams in the state, so it doesn't get any easier for the Marauders. But this is the first of second. Um, once again, I'm Sh between Fredonia and Dunkirk, I mean. Shannon Davis, Cody Decker, Jackson Hickey, um, Dylan, who else we have here again? Count the camera. Cooper. And Cooper, great work tonight, and thanks for putting this together. And with that, Cody, any final thoughts? No, it was a good win, great atmosphere for the first time was the best game to call. Yeah, a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us tonight, and stay tuned for, not sure when, if, if we'll be back, but uh, we'll try to let you know. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>